Hey folks, Matt Eaton, Scholar Gladiatorius. So I've had an enormous problem over the last couple of weeks and it's essentially people come up to me and keep saying how amazing I look and trying to get my number and things like this. And essentially this is the reason. It's not just me, it's the jacket. And what is this? This is the new, relatively new Spez officer jacket inspired by 19th century um, treatises, mostly sabre, um, but this jacket could be used for all sorts of things, small sword, rapier, sabre, um, potentially even long sword with added protection. Um, but this is an, an amazing jacket. I'm super, super happy with it. And uh, some of you will have already seen pictures of this that I've been posting on Facebook. And I know Nick Thomas has done a recent review of it as well. I'm sure other people will be. Um, uh, so let's have a little bit of a look at this jacket. So the first thing to say about it is this jacket fulfills a particular niche and just so happens a niche that I was looking to fill. Um, and that niche is a lighter jacket than, for example, the Spez um, Axel Pettersen jacket. And um, so that most of these jackets that have been made for HEMA up till now have, um, have been made for longsword or with longsword on mind. And you can understand that longsword is the most popular style of, of um, sword based um, fencing in HEMA. But there is a growing community, growing very fast, I would say, actually, of saberers, uh, saberists, or whatever you want to call them, uh, rapierists, um, small sworders, this kind of thing, who just don't need as much protection as, um, for example, a longsword jacket, or perhaps even a um, sword and buckler jacket or a messer jacket, but they need something uh, that's more than just a sport fencing jacket. And for many years, people have used um, sport fencing coaches jackets. Now, there's a few problems with coaching jackets for sport fencing and the most the, the biggest problem to my to my mind anyway is the fact that they're not very good articulation at the arms so that it tends to be when you lift the arm up that the whole body of the jacket lifts up and one of the reasons for this is because in sport fencing you're keeping in most most of the time in foil epe or modern saber you're keeping the arm relatively low relatively down yeah you occasionally lift up to protect the head and saber but generally speaking those jackets don't have great articulation at the arms this this really really does um, and it's got absolutely great movement um, so that's the first thing and this is a dedicated HEMA jacket and it is very much inspired by 19th century sabre jackets so it is lighter than the um, Spez AP jacket or equivalent jackets from other makers um, but it's nowhere near as light as a sport fencing jacket it definitely has some padding to it and I have to say it has more padding to it than I was actually expecting now for years I have focused on Sabre. Um, I have been using a Spez AP jacket for many, many years. I've experimented with um, other jackets, but I did go back to the Spez. But one of the things that really bugs me um, when I'm fencing is getting too hot. I don't deal with heat very well, probably why all my hair fell out to help the heat um, uh, <laughs> escape out of my body. Um, but so I was looking very much for a lighter jacket and, and there are various lighter jackets around, but this, just came along at exactly the right time. I have a good history with Spares personally. Everything I've ever had from Spares has been great and their service has been great, okay? So I have nothing negative to say about Spares whatsoever. I love all their stuff. I love everything they come up with. I love their, um, their friendliness, their company ethos. They even sent me a Christmas thing, I think. Um, but anyway, they're great. And this jacket has the look I was looking for. It looks like, without being reenactment-ish, it looks like a modern take on the 19th century jacket. So it's perfect for what I do, which is British military sabre most of the time. But equally, if I switch to doing rapier or small sword, I can use this as well, without being as hot as I need to be when I put all the long sword protection on. Now, one important point to make is that you will, certainly for sabre and perhaps things like sword and buckler, you will need extra protection than just what's shown here. Some people will want to wear a chest protector, plastic, plastic chest protector underneath, or a plastron, um, and most people, I would say, will want to wear additional forearm and elbow protection. I've got one of uh, Spez's elbow protectors, which usually, you notice there's Velcro things on here, um, does attach to this jacket, and I have the elbow cup on all the time for basically any weapon I'm doing. Um, but I do additionally put on a forearm guard uh, when I'm doing sabre, because a steel sabre could quite easily break your arm uh, without one of those on. The Spez AP jacket, I found I could just about get away with not using a forearm guard on, but with this jacket, I need to. But what is nice is I only need it on one arm. If I'm doing sabre, then I only need the additional protection on my right side, leaving the left-hand side 
cooler and less encumbered, which is great, less weight, less heat. I absolutely love it, that's exactly what I was looking for. So essentially it becomes modular. You can add bits on if you need to, you can take bits off if you don't need them. So it's about as light and breathable and the least hot it, it can be, while still providing the protection needed for steel sabre, rapier, small sword, potentially sword and buckler, perhaps even for some people, messer as well. Um, so it's great, it absolutely fulfills the niche that I was looking for, uh, for this to, to fulfill. Is it cooler? Yes, it is cooler, but don't think that it isn't still like putting a jacket on, okay? So it's a little bit like putting on your kind of spring or autumn jacket on, but it's not like putting your winter jacket on. That's the kind of difference we're talking about here. So you still get fairly hot in it, but only about the same heat as you would get wearing a sweatshirt or a hoodie or um, a, a light relatively light outdoor jacket and then doing physical activity okay um, so yes you do get a bit hot in it but nowhere near as much as the um, heavier jackets now in terms of protection I've mentioned the arms you definitely need more on the arms if you're doing sabre or, or um, uh, sword and buckler you probably don't need anything extra on the arms if you're doing rapier most types of rapier if you're doing side sword you probably need something on the arm and the i'd say definitely the elbow small sword you don't need anything extra um, so it's a great jacket from that point of view now let's actually have a look at taking this jacket off and see how it kind of goes together so one of the first things i'll address is the collar indeed the collar velcros up here it overlaps and indeed there is a blade catcher here made of the um, 350 newton material that the whole jacket is made of um, and indeed yes that will stop things sliding or at least help prevent things sliding up underneath the mask and i would say you could underneath that flap there you could insert a piece of hard material piece of leather maybe or piece of plastic if you wanted to, to give a bit of extra direct thrust protection. So I think that's absolutely great. It's not restrictive, it's comfortable, and it seems to do the job. So as we undo the jacket, you'll notice immediately that we essentially have an overlapping flap at the front here, and it has a zip, okay? The, the push studs are really there to close and cover that zip, and partly for appearance, it has to be said. And uh, as you pull the whole thing, it will undo that easily, okay? And so let's go from the beginning. If you were putting this on, you've got this flap here with a cord. My interpretation is that's supposed to go under the armpit pretty much. Uh, kind of like dressing gowns sometimes do. So that goes under there to hold that flap over that side. You hold it on your armpit just to hold that flap over and then you fold it over here. You immediately go down to the bottom of the zip down here and you just find it. Um, stick the zip in, zip up and boom. At that point and you push it's now ready to go. You don't physically actually need to do these push studs um, up and some people have asked me uh, shout out to TQ specifically asked me when I first showed photos of this jacket um, are the push studs a pain in the butt um, well no not really actually and um, so you don't need to do all of them up you could just do a couple of them up you don't actually technically need to do any of them up I could now fence obviously this is a right-handed jacket so I'm now fencing this way or if you're rapier and dagger or whatever you're doing sword and buckler and this side is predominantly presented forward so the opening is pointing away from the opponent makes a lot of sense but if you want to do that um, those push studs up how many I've got two four six eight nine of them you don't need to do all nine but just as a demonstration so if I go boom straight in at the top one one two uh, can't get that one three four five six seven and I'll do the bottom one boom and that's it done and you've already seen how easy it is to get off okay uh, you just simply pull the thing and go down bam okay and that's jacket straight off and it's quite comfortable to wear just undone like that and relatively quick to get back done up. You'll also notice that once you've got the jacket um, on, you can just leave the top part, I'm st struggling to do the zip without looking down, there we go, you can just leave if you're just hot. Um, so I was walking around at training the other day just like that. So you can still keep the bottom ones done up and keep the top open and that'll help you cool down a bit. And someone said it looks quite cool, so that's no bad thing. Right, so let's just have a little look inside the jacket. Um, this is the jacket here. It's fairly light but not incredibly light it still kind of feels like a fairly heavy jacket like you might wear about town and inside it has this kind of um uh, wicking type um is it it's not wicking I, I can't remember what it's called um but it's essentially vented uh with with holes in it uh, material which helps of course uh, it dries out quicker 
and it keeps moisture away from the body. Um, it's just all the good things. It's, uh, it will wash more easily, it will dry more easily. Um, it's great stuff and it's just really, really nicely made inside, I've got to say. Um, and you can see it's actually got a fair amount of padding. So if you're thinking about where the where the padding is. I would say it's relatively even all over the body, um, but it's got a little bit of extra padding on the front of the chest and a little bit of extra padding on the shoulders, I would say. Um, now, one thing I will talk about, so some people have um, commented on, is the strap at the back. So the strap at the back is what gives it the fitted look at the front. Some people have said, oh, I don't really like the strap at the back, it looks a bit messy. The problem is if you're going to make a jacket that people can buy off the shelf and still create a fitted look without it having a bespoke cut, that's basically what you've got to do. You could, if you wanted, just order a bespoke one and then you might not even need that strap or it might not be, need to be much done up. I take size L, incidentally, I'm about, um, I have to use Imperial here, but I'm six foot one and I weigh about um, 13 stone. Um, so uh, I, I'm size L in spare sizes for the shoulders, but I'm size M around the middle which I'm not going to complain about, but that does mean that I need to pull in this um, strap in order to give it the fitted look. And yes, it does look a little bit messy at the back. And that is basically my only criticism, but I accept that there's no way around that if you're going to make a jacket in standard sizes that's going to fit lots of different shapes and sizes. Um, so, um, so yeah, it's just a very tidy jacket. I'm absolutely happy with it. Uh, it's a little bit more padded and a little bit warmer than I expected, but, Having been, having been wearing it in training and sparring for a couple of weeks and having been hit with some very, fairly substantial hits from our steel sabres with it, in it rather, not with it, um, I, I've taken a few bruises where I didn't used to get bruises before in the Axel Peterson jacket. I'm happy with that. I'm happy to be lighter and less hot and take a few more bruises that's fine. Um, it's still providing enough protection for what I want, so long as you wear the additional protection of the forearm and the elbow guards. So that's a fairly quick run through. I'm not gonna go on for too long, but that's a fairly quick run through of the new officer jacket from Spez. I love it, okay? And I will be wearing this for many years, I expect, and I fully expect that when this wears out, I'll get another one. In fact, I might even just get another one for the hell of it in a different colour, because I absolutely love them. And I might get a bespoke one as well that's a bit more cut to my shape. Um, but I hope that was interesting and useful, and um, obviously link below to the actual product. And thanks again to Spez, and um, go and buy one, basically. <laughs> okay, cheers folks, and have a good Christmas. Thanks for watching, please subscribe. We have extra videos on Patreon, and you can follow us on Facebook.